Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about AWPS, the Alec Alp WordPress starter theme for developers. Welcome again, in this video I'm going to show you some uh, recent updates that I released to AWPS in terms of dealing and managing in an easier way the settings API. So if you follow the uh, previous tutorials, the sunset theme tutorials, uh, you probably noticed how hard and painful and long it was to generate an administration area and some custom fields inside the administration settings and um, create some pages, admin pages, admin sub pages, all this kind of stuff. It was not the easiest process and that's because the settings API are kind of complicated. Uh, the settings API have been around for many many years and pretty much every advanced theme or plugins use the settings API to generate custom sections, custom fields, custom options and all this kind of good stuff that you want to offer to a premium theme or a premium plugin. But the problem is that uh, they haven't been developed much uh, lately and um, WordPress is moving towards the customizer API that are more intuitive and easier to, to manage but the settings API are still there they're gonna stay they're gonna remain active for many many years to come and uh, uh, we need to use them the problem is that if we check uh, one example of the settings API you will notice that can get out of hand pretty quickly. Uh, in this example for the sunset theme, we are using this code to generate um, main admin section and then some sub menu pages. Um, using this code, using this uh, function, this method from WordPress by declaring pretty much the same stuff, just like changing a bunch of things, then hooking everything inside a custom method and calling the custom method with an action, and then doing the same thing again and again for registering settings, registering a settings section, registering a settings field, and so on and so on. Repeating the same, you'll notice like how many times we repeat the same exact method just to, I don't know, change a bunch of things just to generate some quick sections and some quick options. So the other problem with the settings API, it's also the callback hell that can happen easily. For every method that we're using here, we have a callback that we can declare to print whatever we want for the method. So if we have a section, we can print the description of the section. If we have a field, we can print how the field looks, if it's a checkbox, text area, tab, or whatever. Um, using only and just callbacks to methods that are in the same file uh, will lead to something like that, a waterfall of spaghetti code of all functions and function after functions and it gets totally out of hand for a not really complicated section. So you can get a really small administration area uh, that requires a gigantic file to be coded properly and that's, that's not good, we don't want that. That's why I decided to code something custom. I decided to code a PHP class in object-oriented programming to wrap the settings API and offer a sort of interface, an easier and more intuitive interface to use them uh, uh, with less code, as less code as possible. So let's take a look on how to use them. If we access my uh, test installation of WordPress, you will notice that it's just a default standard installation, that's nothing. The only thing that I did was downloading AWS and activating AWPS. So now that's perfect. We have the standard theme and we nothing fancy. Uh, if you download the latest version of AWPS, uh, you will have automatically an administration area here with um, some default settings, just one custom field, one custom options, and all this kind of stuff to uh, give you a placeholder to start. I'm showing you, I'm leaving you the code that it already it's already there, already works, that you can edit. In uh, this video, we're gonna actually code that section and we're gonna see all the methods and how to use them. So if we access our uh, text editor and we access the config API settings.php file, this is where I created the custom functions and custom class 
to uh, wrap all the native methods of WordPress for the settings API. And you don't have to touch this file. This is the file that I generated for you so you can use it to quickly generate new section. The only thing that you have to do with this file is extending this settings class in your custom class. So as an example, in this video, I'm using a, inside the custom folder, um, class called admin. I'm already uh, referring inside the um, init.php file and I'm already initializing a new instance of the class. So every time I code something inside the class, automatically it will be generated and initialized in our uh, theme installation. So inside the class, the first thing we, that we have to do, as I said, we need to extend the settings API class that I generated. To extend a class, you can just simply write extends and then the name of the class. But unfortunately, we cannot do this right away because we don't know, like the code doesn't know where the settings API is. So we need to say, to the code, hey, we want to use the AWPS API settings. And maybe let's use the backward slash and not the forward slash. And this path is exactly the path where the settings.php uh, file is, is inside AWPS, it's the config file, API settings right there. So now we can extend this class and use all the methods that are inside. So first of all, let's create the construct method of a class that if you know a little bit about object-oriented programming, you will know that this method is the first one that automatically gets called when a new instance of this class gets initialized. So in this case, the first thing that I want to do, I want to generate a new admin page with a custom icon inside the admin page, inside the sidebar of the administration area. So the first thing that I want to do, I want to create a method inside this class called admin pages. And of course, you can call these methods whatever you want. You can name it whatever, like AWPS pages or my custom pages, stuff like that. I'm oh, sorry, all together, my custom pages, whatever. Um, just keep it really simple. You're using this method to generate an admin page or multiple admin pages, so call it admin pages. That's it. Let's create this method that we're going to call right away. Of course, called private function admin pages. And I'm calling a private function instead of a public one because I don't want the user or I don't want another developer to access this function, this method directly outside the admin class. If a method is declared private, only the construct or the class itself inside after being initialized can access, can call this method. Outside this class, without being initialized, this method admin pages cannot be accessed. And this is pretty good because we avoid to generate issues. So in this method, we're going to uh, create an array, a multidimensional array to define all the variables and all the settings, the default settings of WordPress to generate an admin area. So first, let's create an arguments array. And inside here, let's create another array that is going to contain all our settings, all our instructions for that unique admin page. I'm uh, uh, using a multidimensional array. So we have an array inside an array because we can duplicate and maybe if I write array properly, sorry, because we can uh, repeat another array inside these arguments array to have uh, uh, multiple admin pages and generate multiple ad admin pages at the same time with just one single API call. And let me show you what I mean. So the first argument is the page title argument. And for now, I'm going to just uh, write something super simple. So let's say that this is the store admin page. Um, I'm, I'm creating a store section, <laughs> whatever. Um, the second parameter is the menu menu title and is the um, uh, text that appears inside the sidebar. And uh, this text is going to be store in my case. Then we need to declare the capability 
of this page and the capability refers to what the user can do and can see. In my case, it's gonna be manage options so only admin level of users can see this stuff. And then the menus log of the um, this page in the admin area is gonna be store. And then we have the almighty callback. For now, we're gonna just write a method in line, like a function callback in line to echo uh, just an h1 div class. Say wrap, let's close the div, and then h1 store admin page. Let's just leave it like that for now. The other attribute is the icon URL. And the icon URL can be uh, the full URL of uh, your custom icon. So you can say get template directory URI, access your assets, images, and put your icon. Or you can write directly the dash icons of WordPress. In my case, I'm gonna use the dash icons of WordPress. And my dash icons will be dash icons store, the name of the dash icons that I wanna use. So let's put it here. And then the last parameter that I need to define is the position of my menu item. Uh, I want this menu item at the bottom of everything, so I'm gonna put a position of 110. Now I have my arguments array, and uh, at this time I can tap the settings API and call a unique method in the settings API called add admin pages. And to this method, I need to just pass the arguments array that I just generated. Let's save it. If I go back in my uh, administration area and I refresh, nothing happens because I'm not actually initializing the settings API. In order to initialize the settings API, I need to call the parent, and the parent stands for the settings, so I'm calling the parent class that I'm extending, and here I wanna simply initialize the construct method of my parent. So inside the construct method of the settings API, uh, the class is gonna check if we have anything declared, an admin section, subsection, custom fields, and it's gonna generate everything for us. So let's go back in our admin area, let's refresh, and there you go, you notice what happened here? We have our little icon that it's in the position that I, I specified with the name that I specified and the icon that I specified. If I click on it, we're gonna have the callback calling that uh, HTML inline HTML function that I declare with the title of store admin page. And uh, that's perfect. I just created a custom admin area with just few lines of code. And you probably will start doubting about this, like why should I use this if the actual original method is more linear? Let me give you an example. So if we grab the same exact code that we should use to generate an admin page using the default settings API, and we paste it here. Look how uh, different and more uh, complicated or like less intuitive is this method. It's called add menu page. So um, it doesn't refer to the administration area, doesn't refer to this is my custom settings or whatever. It's just a menu page. So it's just generic, we, it's just like not, not intuitive. Um, all these methods that we're declaring are not referred with an associative array. Uh, so you don't know what this location is, a sunset theme option, the sunset, what's the manage option? Probably manage options, it's the capability. What is the Alicat sunset? I don't know. In this way, with this associative array, you know that this value is the page title. And you have all these declarations that are matching and you exactly know where is the callback here. What's the callback? Oh, is this sunset theme create page, but then you have to find in the same location the function that you're calling with the sunset theme create page. And it's, in my opinion, it's way more complicated, especially if in this case, we wanna generate another admin page with the old method or like the default method of WordPress, we need to duplicate the entire code and change a bunch of things. Again, call the same method and rewrite a bunch of stuff. Can you imagine having to generate four pages? How hard is to 
read this stuff and understand it. It's so convoluted and complicated and not intuitive at all. Instead, here, with my new method, you can just simply, okay, I need to generate another page. Let's create the AWPS admin page. Let's do it. Let's put a comma. Let's paste the array and let's change this to AWPS admin page. The menu title is going to be AWPS. Manage options is fine. The menus log is going to be AWPS. The icon URL, I want to use an image that I have inside my assets, images, AWPS logo that you cannot see is really, really small, but I'm going to use that. So to use that, I'm going to just simply write get template directory URI, and then I'm going to concatenate this to my assets folder images aws-logo.png oops png and the position is going to be 111 because i want this to be below the store admin that's it i save it let's change this call back to aws admin page uh, there you go i don't have to do anything else i go back in my admin section i refresh and magically, I have right away another admin page with all my custom settings, the custom name, the custom icon, the custom slug, and the custom title. And uh, that's perfect. That's really easy. How many seconds did it take us to generate another admin page? And look how cleaner and easier to read is this code with an associative array. If we want to extend a little bit the callback function, we have the full control of having a PHP inline here. We're not bounded to write the method of the function, create a function, and then do whatever we want inside the function. So as an example, I generate inside the views folder, an admin folder inside the index.php. It's a simple template in HTML where I wrote like the store settings and then a paragraph. So if, for example, I want to call this section, I want to use this as the actual template, as the actual uh, page of my store admin page. The only thing that I can do, or I have to do here, instead of writing an echo, I need to just require once and call the default get template directory of WordPress and concatenate it with the location of my custom PHP file. So views admin index.php. And of course you can put uh, this file, whatever you want. I put it inside the views because I feel it's more organized, but if you can, if you want create a custom sections inside the uh, config file, you can create a new folder and put all your custom templates for the admin session inside the config folder. So that's totally up to you, but let's save it. Let's go back in our admin area. Let's refresh. Nothing changes for AWPS, but if we go inside the store, we're going to have require once an error on it. Sorry, that's an error. It's views, not views So views admin index. When you call a directory, be sure to write it correctly. <laughs> and that's that's it. Now we have the store settings, the paragraph, this is my whatever HTML, and this is perfect because with this simple callback to require a custom template, now I can access my custom template and write whatever you want. I have full control here on the HTML, on all the fields, all the settings, all the so sections and whatever. So with the same logic, the thing that we can do, we can activate subpages, custom sections, custom fields, custom options, and manage everything through uniquely generated templates and PHP files for us, custom callback functions, and multidimensional arrays to simply call just one single method and pass the variable, and managing everything and all the options with a way cleaner and easier associative array. In future videos, I'm going to show you also how to tap all the rest of the uh, really good stuff of the settings API with this new interface. But if you want, please give it a try. Um, download the latest version of AWPS and see how I'm using this uh, custom admin.php file to uh, generate all the sections that I want inside AWPS and how I'm uh, using a custom callback class to 
quickly call custom templates and custom files for every section, or simply custom methods to maintain everything more organized and easier to read, even in the long run. So it's pretty much it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please give it a like or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!